Hello everyone, welcome to my very first podcast. In today's recording, we're going to be talking about church etiquette. So if you are in the place where you are trying to transition between church, you have been in this church for way too long, you're not growing, nothing is going on, the Lord has just been revealing one and too many things to you, you don't know what to do with it, you need a new church home, it can be so hard to transition in between churches, especially when you have gotten used to and comfortable, you have adopted to the community or the the group that you are a part of it can be very difficult to move forward and so we're going to be talking about how to transition how to find that perfect i don't want to say perfect no church is perfect but how do you find a church that you can actually settle down in and be a part of as you move forward in your christian faith so that's what we're going to be discussing today in the comment section i need you guys to flood flood the comment section with your 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 i want to hear your opinions and your views on everything that i'm going to be discussing today all right so i'm going to be sharing with you the way that i view church and i'm just going to be quite honest and just frank about everything just lay all the cards on the table and just just spill my heart out so you guys can understand how i see church and how i believe personally individually these are my opinions that the church should be run and how the church should actually operate right no if you are looking for a new church if you want to get comfortable or to settle to take a membership in a church there are few things that you're actually looking out for please remember that no church is perfect there are some people they change church every single day every week every month every few months they're going to a new church you see them today what church you're a part of jesus baptized one mission today and by tomorrow they are a member of another church and i never get it i never get it how do you change church so often how do you go from one place to the next so often like people don't want to be settled that's one thing but if you want to find a church that you can settle in look for that friendly church the way i see church and as i pastored how i trained people how to function in church is that our church should be the most the friendliest church in town and not the most friendliest not good english but our church should be the friendliest church in town and so looking for a new church when you walk into that building just by walking into the building and the atmosphere it should already feel like home when you go home you want to feel a sense of peace relaxation serenity just loving that atmosphere and if you go to church you want to feel that very same thing there's some people their slogan is welcome home you go to their church they say welcome home but some people they, they don't want to go home some people go to church to escape home because home is where the trauma is home is where the pain is home is where all the stress and all the battles that they're fighting is and so they want to get away from home they go to work they go to the park they go to the club they go to the bar or they go to church so what makes church different from home when they come to church you need to have someone at the entrance that will welcome that person here's the thing we put church in a little circle and a little box over here and we say this is church this is the house of the of god you come here to worship hear the word be delivered be healed whatever you do in church and you go home but there is so much more where church etiquette is concerned there's so much more where hospitality is concerned in the church that we lack as a body of christ i know the church should be fa- facilitating and building and and nurturing in spiritual things but in order for a church to be effective and efficient in everything that she does and yeah I call the church she to be effective in everything that she does there has to be some of the physical stuff that you put into it it's like making a big pot of gumbo or a big pot of soup um, it's not just the seasoning that makes it soup it's not just the the meat that makes it soup the peas that makes it soup the flour that makes it so no 
it's everything coming together in one big pot that gives that flavor that aroma that more watering taste that's what church is so you walk into church someone greets you at the door they say welcome so for example my church is elevation center so you walk in someone ought to be there that says welcome to elevation center it's good to have you worshiping with us today may I walk you to your seat or perhaps you can say welcome to elevation center how are you doing today it's good to have you worshiping with us we do hope that you will enjoy today's service and come again may I walk you to your seat no what is wrong with saying and doing all of that are you doing too much no that's not doing too much as a matter of fact that's doing a very little as far as i'm concerned because hey guess what if you go to a business place um if you walk into a business place there's a strong possibility that there is a security that's at the front that's gonna sanitize your hand and say welcome to this law firm welcome to our company um how may i be of assistance to you today what department are you trying to get to do you have an appointment they're gonna ask you questions for some of the companies there's a secretary at the entrance the moment you walk in there's a whole secretary there they're gonna say hi welcome to our business welcome to our company how may i be of assistance today may i have your name may I offer you a cup of water a cup of tea or coffee that's the that's that's the reception that you're getting that's the invitation and the warmness that you're being greeted by as you walk through you walk through a church for many churches you walk through you don't know if you can sit here if you can sit there what you can do I've literally seen people go to churches sitting in the wrong chair and someone comes and say um you can't sit here you have to sit over there if you had someone that was greeting them at the entrance ushering them to their seat then you wouldn't have to deal with that right so so someone should be able to greet you at the door and welcome you in and walk you into your seat now here's what happened at most churches there's someone that waits and greets and welcomes people into the welcome certain persons into the church but not everybody's gonna get this official welcome there are some people there are some churches that indeed has someone that does welcome but they're only welcoming the pastor or the guest speaker or some person that has a title or some officials of the church or society they get invited in so now we want to find a church where you can go to that church and when you get there it doesn't matter if you have a title or not if you dress lovely or not if you're a first-time visitor or not you get that official welcome into church and you're not just getting a welcome but you're getting welcome and invited in with a smile and I tell the people when I train them that when you're welcoming people to church if these are our members that come to church every Sunday two per two times per week three times per week you're going to welcome them as though it's the first time you're seeing them hi brother John welcome back to church how are you doing today I hope you have a wonderful service as always so you're used to seeing brother John and even though you saw him yesterday and he's back today you're gonna welcome him today again not because it is your job title which which means that for the person that will be doing this at the front of the church as a as someone that invites or greet they have to have a personality that is bubbly cheerful the fruit of the spirit joy they have to have that they have to have joy they have to have share they have to have a people personality you can't welcome someone with your face looking as though you were baptized in lemon juice no that doesn't work so you're looking for the friendliest church in town okay that's the first thing the second thing that we want to talk about is um, leaders persons leaders such as ushers greeters and people that work in the church their facial expression their body gestures you know their choice of words and their tone so as the person greets you and ushers you in that body language it says a lot the tone of voice it says a lot the attitude it says a lot you want people to come to your church and when they come to your church when you visit that church as you want to find somewhere to settle in a church as you transition your first impression is going to last the same way you put together and you organize and set certain things for a company or a business as I mentioned before is the same way you're going to set certain things for the church because your first impression of us is something that's going to last if you walk into a church and all the leaders have an attitude they look at you like oh yeah she's not a pastor so she doesn't even matter she doesn't have a title so 
so she's just a visitor we don't care you can't give a big tides or a big seed so you don't even matter I it's a strong possibility that I will not go back a strong possibility that you will not go back and so pay attention to the body the body languages the tone of voices the attitude the facial expressions when you find the church that you go to oftentimes these outward things are outward expressions that reflect something that is deeper you thank me later do not ignore the nudges in your spirit and the little glimpses and the little impressions that the Holy Spirit is actually sharing with you to allow you to prevent you from falling into something that will affect you later because hey let's be honest many of you have been a part of a church and when the time actually has come for you to transition and leave then is when you actually begin to think about the things from the very first day you started you know uh, when i just came this person they did this their attitude was, was a bit off and these things were happening i don't even know how i didn't see these things why didn't i recognize these red flags which means that if there are red flags there are red flags from the very first moment you walk into that church but the pretty lights the beautiful lights the beautiful setup of the church everything just threw you off so you ended up ignoring and turning the blind eye to the red flags so once you leave and everything becomes bad then you begin to realize that there were red flags all along so these are the things you're looking for as you begin to transition and look for a church home so do not ignore the red flags it is going to make sense to you later all right no when you find a church that is a church that caters to everybody it doesn't matter what title you have it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive it doesn't matter who you know or what you do what you look like on the outward appearance you want a church that caters to the entire family we're gonna talk about family in just a minute but it's good to be a part of a church that recognizes you and that sees you for example if you are a part of certain organizations like a financial institution for example you have done business with a certain company they have your date of birth they have your anniversary they have certain special days for you i mean when your birthday comes around you get these little emails from these companies that says happy birthday to you we hope that you'll have a wonderful day today and you'll enjoy your day to the max have a happy anniversary they're gonna reach out to you and congratulate you on something and just celebrate with you which means that if you're a part of a church why can't at the end of every month the way I see it is at the end of every month if you're a part of this church they recognize you they see you and the work that you're doing right so you want to be a part of a church that recognizes you and you know what you're doing in the church I mean there are some people that go to church and they want to be recognized for everything that you do given that anything you do for the church you do for God and you don't do it so you can be recognized that you can really be celebrated or, or known or seen for it but I do believe that if you're a part of a church that you should feel as though you are a part of the church feeling or having that sense of belonging it makes a difference you know you don't just want to go to, unless you really want to you don't just want to go to church and just be lost where your pastor doesn't even know who you are and that's an issue with some of the mega churches there's so many people that are a part of the church that uh, your leader doesn't know who you are if you need to get a recommendation later if you need to get something done your leader has no idea who you are I've seen many persons have come to me asking for a recommendation letters they want to use me as a reference they need so many things and when I ask the question what about your pastor what about your church um, I go to a mega church my pastor doesn't know who I am how do you have a mega church and you don't put things into place so that you can know your members there are certain mega at churches where it may be impossible for the pastor to know everyone and hey we're just talking about it but if the pastor can't possibly face physically know every one of his or her members then it means that they have to start breaking certain things they have to start putting and implementing certain measures for example get an assistant pastor you need an assistant pastor you need a youth pastor you need more than one pastors so that each 
person can be a part of a group that is communicating or that has access to this pastor another group in this church in this area has access to another pastor so we all want to speak to our pastors at some point in time we all need prayers we all need help we need some form of reassurance encouragement and I'm not talking about the encouragement and reassurance you get on Sunday. Everybody wants to ask their pastor a question. Is the truth? And I know sometimes it can be difficult for pastors. As a pastor, I've had many members come to me all the time, and sometimes I do not get a chance to respond. Sometimes there are too many messages. Sometimes I'm, uh, I don't want to say not in the mood. Uh, sometimes I'm just tired. I need some time for myself. But when these things happen, who do you have in place to deal with these things for you? You need other pastors as a part of the church. So with this being said, if you can put 50 persons in one group with one pastor, another 50 persons in another group with another pastor, then everyone feels welcome, everyone feels at home, everyone feels seen and recognized. The aim is not to feel recognized. That's not why you go to church. You go to church to worship and to know God. But who doesn't want to be a part of a community? At the end of the month, I believe that when you have been a member of a church, you can give your name, your address, your date of birth, your anniversary, so at the end of the month each time someone celebrates your name can be put on on a board somewhere on the wall that says these are the persons who are celebrating anniversary if you see them around wish them anniversary you can put it on a projector you can send them an email a text message something can be done to make them know that hey we know that you're born on this day and we celebrate with you little things goes a long way it seems like a big deal why do churches have to do so much it seems like a big deal but these are are just some little things that goes a mighty long ways you have a huge church or a small church you need certain things to be implemented and structured such as cell groups you need cell groups for various different reasons there are some churches that have groups that are cult groups that are secret society groups that's not what i'm talking about but you need cell groups that cater to individual spiritual and individual pers personal needs for example a cell group that helps to teach and assist nurture people youth young people who are single how do you how do you assist persons who are single or struggling uh, how do you deal with persons who just got married how do you deal with persons who are who have been married for a long time you need a group that can help to facilitate these people and what they're dealing with in life a cell group that meets once per month that talks about entrepreneurship and finances help to build the church not just spiritually but also so physically individually where families are concerned we need to be a part of a church if you are looking for a church do not just go to a church that sees everything just spiritual all they deal with is the spiritual stuff and not the physical you want to be a part of a church that caters to the holistic man the man individually you want him to grow spiritually you want him to grow physically the churches that caters to nothing but your spiritual being are churches that truly does not want you to grow if you're growing spiritually you should be growing physically it's easy for us as leaders to probably teach people to grow spiritually but are you able to help persons to grow on a physical on a physical level so talk to the youth of the church make the youth feel a part of a group they come together they play games they have discussions they have questions pastors if there's any pastor listening to this podcast people have a lot of questions you'll never be able to answer everyone's questions but you can try to meet them halfway by answering some of the questions in a cell group it's one of the most lovely things people love when they have casual meetings and their pastor comes wearing a cap a jeans or a fitted pants a track suit some loungewear sneakers and you sit you wrap with the group you play games you I don't know what kind of games but you play games you have fun with your people let them see you on 
on a casual level in a place that is not so informed that is not so formal that you can build relationship with them it is possible for you to have a relationship with your pastor but still honor that pastor now there are many leaders that have put themselves in a place where they do not communicate with the members because of this honor it goes both ways members if you're a part of a church you everybody wants to be close to their pastor it's something i never understood everyone wants to say i'm close to pastor i spoke to pastor yesterday i went for dinner with pastor everyone wants to say that i have a close relationship with the pastor is it pride maybe you guys can tell me what it is what is it what do you get what do you get what do you benefit to say that you know i'm close to pastor than everyone else is and you can boast and brag that you went to pastor's house and so i don't know what it is if that's what people want that's the wrong motive but naturally authentically and genuinely without any ill intentions some people just want to have a relationship or just want to get to know their pastor differently than in the pulpit and so with that being said there's some people that look forward to having their pastor in a more informal setting where they can ask questions and let me make it let me break it down by asking questions i don't mean personal questions what did you have for dinner yesterday i mean questions like what was it like for you coming into ministry um what was it like for you um transitioning into being a christian and coming into ministry what's one of the struggles you went through because my answering some of these questions it builds relatability it builds transparency if my pastor went through this then i'm going through the same thing i know i can come through because of his or her testimony now some people get close to their pastor some people get to have a conversation with their pastor and because they had a conversation with their pastor they begin they, they feel as though we're friends and so because they feel as though they're no friends they feel as though they can pass their place and they can begin to dishonor and disrespect if you have become a friend to your pastor you have to learn how to be a friend without dishonoring you have to learn how to be a friend but still learn to honor that person if i'm married to a pastor i have to learn how to call you baby how to call you honey how to call you sexy baby daddy whatever i call you but in the platform i have to also learn how to honor you as a man or woman of god that's what some people miss and so as a result of this from the pew certain leaders have drawn a line and have secluded them themselves in a box where you can only communicate with them unless you go through a secretary and that is a problem that's a huge problem do you guys see what i'm talking about how, let's be honest how many of you have actually spoken to your pastor over a phone call how many of you have actually had a meeting with your pastor how many of you have requested to meet with your pastor um to get counseling and the secretary has not yet responded to your email and so because of this you are resorting to seek other pastors let's be honest i get so many messages from day to day with people who are coming to me for advice coming to me for prayers coming to me for direction coming to me for relief for everything you can think about but yet they have their own pastor but they can't go to their pastor because their pastor does not have time for them my question is why do you go to a church why do you settle in a church why do you take membership in a church give that church everything but your pastor doesn't know who you are your pastor doesn't have time to discuss with you to pray with you to help to nurture you in your personal life and you can have a pastor but you can have a mentor who is not a pastor you can have a mentor of someone who is not a part of your church or a part of some other church but even if your pastor is not your mentor or not your spiritual guider you can still you should still be in a position where you can talk to your pastor if needs be how can you be a part of a church but you can't even get a reference letter if needs be for you to get one what sense does that make that's what i'm saying if you're trying to find a home church find a church that caters to the to the the, the holistic individual so you have cell meetings where you talk about life the struggles of life we shall keep we're just keeping it real you talk about marriage life before marriage 
single engage you talk about um what to do while you're waiting before you get married financial stability here's the problem why some church won't have cell block meetings and meetings like these because they want to keep you on one level they want they do not there are many churches that does not want you to grow The paradox is they want you to come to church because they want you to grow, but in the same time, they're not doing anything to help you to grow, to move to a better place in life. I've spoken to many pastors. Can I talk about this? Sure, I can. I don't care. I've spoken to many leaders that have said to me, Prophetess, you're young. You don't know what you're doing. You can't help everyone. You can't help people to come to a certain level because when they get to this level, they will forget that you help them. They will leave your church and they will go somewhere else and some other pastor will benefit from all the hard work that you have put in. And so as a result of this, you have to give them the bare minimum to keep them on this level because as a as long as they do not get blessed, they'll keep coming. But the moment they get a release and they get a blessing, you'll never see them again. When I heard the and I heard this from multiple pastors. When I heard this, I thought this is manipulation this is deception this is at the highest level of manipulation and deception you have to be careful of the churches that you are wanting to be a part of to transition into it is sad to say that many of you have fallen victim to these churches because you're looking for a church that has nothing but hype glitter fame a popularity a large congregation you want your pastor to drive a fancy most uh, the latest car model um, to dress a certain way that's what you're looking for and then when you do not get the help you seek out other pastors and it is very unfair also for you to be a part of that luxury church that you're getting no help but you're seeking other pastors to help you and then you go back to this same church that doesn't recognize you doesn't help you doesn't do anything for you doesn't care about you and you pay your tithes to this church but pastors are supposed to help people. That's what they're supposed to do. Pray for people, help people, whether they're your pastor or not. Yeah, but how selfish is that though? That I'm the one. So here's the truth. I had to be honest with many people. I've had many people that have become very closely associated with me. They have a marriage issue. I counsel them. They have financial issue. I counsel them and I pray. They need deliverance. I've counseled them, help them through deliverance. There's this one particular female. She has got to, she has gotten so many deliverance from so many things from the bloodline, just too many things. She has gotten deliverance over a period of time. She has grown. She has just grown in so many ways. And I, I, I realized that she was to the part of her church. Her pastor doesn't do anything for her. If she needs a recommendation later, there's a strong possibility that they don't even know who she is. She'll never get a recommendation later. They don't help her any at all. I'm the one that has done everything spiritually for this person, basically, if I may say so. This person has never given an offering to our ministry, never given a tithe, never given a seed, never, never took the time out to say, this is how I can offer, donate, or help in the ministry, but I'm the one that is doing everything, and I'm not your pastor. How selfish is that though? And that's the hard, that's the hardcore truth. We have to learn how to be honest. So when you are trying to find a church, find a church that your leader is able to assist you if needs be. That's the honest truth, right? So you need a church that caters to the individual man. There's some people that will help you to a certain, there's some pastors that will help you to a certain level, to a certain area of your life, but they will not allow you to go beyond that level because many pastors do not want you to be more blessed than they are to achieve more than they do because then they will feel some form of uh, inferiority where you are concerned they suffer from this complex where they have to be the one that is the richest they have to be the one that is the most anointed they have to be the one that is at the highest level and so if you are making more money than they are they feel intimidated if you get blessed in the church and you buy a 
newer car than they have they feel intimidated many pastors do not want their members to grow higher than them or to achieve more than them any at all no my pastor is such an exemplary man of god he is 40 years old he just went back to college to get his his bachelor's degree and i heard him say something that over the years he has sent many people to school he has prayed and he has helped so many people to go to school now it is his time to go to school he is 40 years old how many pastors let's be honest how many pastors are going to take their money and assist someone to go and get their degree but they don't have one how many pastors are going to say okay church there's a young man that's a part of our congregation he's a very intelligent excellent brilliant young man that can go far let us come together as a church i need everyone to donate and to give into this cause so we can send little johnny send little derek back to school the church comes together gives two million dollars per year for that child to go to school there's a strong possibility that this pastor could have taken this two million dollars to further his education but no he decides let me send someone let me allow these people to go ahead and i will go later because what is for me is for me and no one can block that how many pastors will do that the way i see it as a pastor is if i do not have my masters in divinity or my doctorate in whatever it is and there are other people in the church that have the ability to do so then i'm building the church in some way if you are let me i want you guys to understand exactly what i'm saying if you work as if you work as a practice nurse that's all you do is clean people clean the poop do all the messy work and i see that you have the potential and the ability to study and to go much further into your career and call from the holy spirit if i can help you to get to that place i'm going to help you because when you get to this place then you can also help me so i help you you help me not that i'm doing this for anything in return but you can be a blessing to the ministry to someone else when i help you to get to that place this is what i taught my church I shouldn't have to pressure anyone to give tithes. I shouldn't have to pressure anyone how much tithes you should give. I can't do that. That's not my call. It's not scriptural. It's not biblical. It's not of God. However, if I want people to give more, then I'm going to equip and train persons to become more mobilized and equipped and efficient in what they do. So if I can help you to grow spiritually, that you learn how to hear the spirit of the Lord, know what he wants you to do, know how to cultivate your gift and how to give birth to your gift in. And I can also teach you how to steward what God has given you so you can continue to replenish, increase and multiply and also to sustain what God has given you. Then if you're no longer selling on the roadside and you now have your own store, if you were selling on the side of the road as a little side hustle and you're making a profit of $10,000 or hundred US dollars every month your tithe is ten dollars if I teach you spiritually physically entrepreneurial skills how to increase and to go from selling on the street to having your own store your profit increases to a thousand dollars then the tithe in the church becomes something that is more than ten dollars this means I do not have to force you to give more but I help you to be able to give more from your own free will that's helping the church church growth is not in numbers church growth is in maturity respect and loyalty if you sometimes loyalty is not just taught through sunday sermons sometimes it's that friday night meeting that thursday evening meeting that you come and you sit with the people you teach them how to be loyal how to give how to be loyal in giving how to be honest how to conduct yourself how to steward how to grow as an individual as a person you help to train and you help to build loyalty loyalty is something that people learn many people have been hurt used abused prostituted they don't know how to be loyal and how to be 
honest it is something that should come from within but when you have given your time to teach people to help to put them in a place where they're healed and they're delivered then they open up and they begin to trust you again note you are transitioning from one church to the other you're going to this church a bit hurt because a bit hurt and a bit scared because you don't want to be hurt again so this is why pastors have to create a platform have to create a little cell group where they can help to work and how to deal with members people get lost in church people come to church the sermon is preached i never really understood what pastor was saying but when i get to church on wednesday for a cell block meeting i have questions from the sermon that was preached on sunday as this is how i see and this is how i believe that the church should operate this is something you're looking forward to as you become a part of a church a church that caters to you as a holistic person now who is your leader who is your pastor is your pastor anointed so your pastor is anointed but he has no maturity and he has no wisdom what do you do how do you deal with this these are things you have to look forward to when you are bec you are becoming a part of a church there are many leaders who are mature who are anointed sorry not mature there are many leaders who are anointed but they're not mature they have no wisdom they'll call a church they'll call your sin out openly publicly to shame you to disgrace you they'll rebuke you openly they'll just do the worst of the worst things openly to destroy your character to condemn you to, to just to bring mockery to your name how do you deal with this and becoming a part of that church there are many leaders that learn along the way that's the truth there are many leaders they learn along the way they make mistakes along the way and your pastor your leader is human which means he will be prone to making mistakes but when you have a leader that is anointed that believes that he or she is anointed and they believe that because they are anointed they know it all then there is a problem I believe and I've been very honest I think this is why we had to close our um, main church location because we were too real we were too honest I know I'm not supposed to be the one to say I'm real but if I am real I know that I'm real and I can say I'm real I said to my congregation I'm young I'm very young I'm a young pastor I just turned 30 years old while I was pastoring I was 27 28 29 I just became 30 years old and I said to them I have a heart for God I understand the heart of God I understand the things of God however I'm still young if I make a mistake there are leaders in this church if I happen to make a mistake as a young woman and a young minister I've never passed out for 10 years 30 years so if I make a mistake God forbid I want us to be able to sit down and say pastor this is where this is where you went wrong this is something that should have never happened this is what really transpired how can we fix it and how can we move forward I'm not expecting that you will come and you will say as a man of God as a woman of God as a prophet of God I never expected that you would say that or that you would do that. Do not put anything beyond me. I'm human. I'm a woman. I'm a man. I can mess up like anyone else does. And so I told them, if I do something that I should not do, let us come and talk about it. If I'm struggling with, with drug addiction, if I'm struggling with, with crack, cocaine, if I'm struggling with something that is terribly not of God, I want you to get me the help that I need. Help to talk to me in private help to get me the counsel i need do not condemn me because i may still be of god and god still has use for me there are many people that will be quick to judge to bash to throw their pastor on that bus and to just write them off completely how many people will go to a church that will know that their pastor eventually came down with a situation that will say okay pastor we believe in you we love you we want you to be better we believe that god has a purpose for you and we say okay i am Admit that I'm wrong. Let us get the youth pastor or the assistant pastor to preach for a couple months until I get myself resituated in the alignment of the Holy Spirit. How many people are truly willing to do that? So your pastors will make mistakes, but when your pastor is making a blatant mistake and does not is not willing to admit that they're making a mistake, they're puffed up in pride and arrogance. How do you become a part of this church? Do not ignore the signs.
You can't ignore the signs. They are there for a reason. So these are the things that we have to pay attention to as we are getting ready to start a church. You're not looking for a perfect church, but you're looking for a church that is real, a church that is authentic and genuine. Find a pastor that will admit, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, then I'm right. I'm not afraid of saying I'm wrong. I'm not afraid of saying that I did something wrong. But can the congregation manage the truth? Can the congregation manage the fact that this person is going through something? No. Pastor Bishop John Gray is one that has gone viral for several things. He cheated on his wife. This thing went completely viral. I'm sure that there's some leaders and some members that walked out of the church. I don't want to be a part of this church because the pastor is constantly cheating on, cheating on his wife. But there are still some leaders that stood with him because they knew that this is truly a man of God. Give him a chance. Some of you are so hypocritical. You want to have the faith of Abraham, but Abraham had such great faith, but he still went out of lines of God and he got his servant pregnant because he could not wait to impregnate Sarah. This is the hypocrisy that I'm talking about in the body of Christ. You want a perfect pastor, but you do not want to be perfect yourself. You expect so much grace from the pulpit, but you do not want to extend the same level of grace back to your pastors. If you sin, you expect your pastor to counsel you, to rebuke you, and to help you to get better in private, not in public. No one needs to know. You want your pastor to shelter your sins. But when your pastor's sins are messes up, how can you dare be a man of God? But you're doing this. I do not condone this as a man of God. I expected so much more from you. The hypocrisy. These are some of the things you have to look out for when you are deciding to start a church. Let's be honest. If I expect this from the man of God, then I must also be bringing, if I expect the man of God to bring this to the table, the church to bring this to the table, then what do I have to offer to this ministry? Now, here's another problem. The leaders are anointed, but they're arrogant. What do you do when you get into a church? where the leader who is supposed to be a pastor and a shepherd, who is supposed to be gentle and caring, is controlling, is manipulative. How do you deal with this? How do you deal with your leader being a prophet? You're also called to be a prophet. You're also called to operate in a certain gifting. May it be prophetic, apostolic, evangelistic, whatever it is. But your pastor is too conceited to accept the fact that there is another prophet in the church. The main reason why many persons are transitioning in between churches because they have a call of God on their lives. The pastor does not recognize their call. The church is not willing to accept that there is another prophet who is among them. There are many leaders that they want to be the only prophet. When I just moved into Montego Bay, there was a pastor, there's a so-called prophet that said, Oh, you think you're called to be a prophet? Uh, no, you're not called to be a prophet. You're going to pull your ear here out and you're going to eat it. You're going to go mad. The problem is there are many leaders in many churches. They believe that they're the only one who are called to be prophets and they will not accept another gifted person in the church because there is intimidation, there's jealousy, and there is competition. You have to be mindful when joining these churches. What platforms are there that helps young people and gifted people to grow in their giftings? These are some of the things you have to begin to question and pray about before you join a church. So you're not transitioning and becoming a part of a church because they have a high... A, a, a large congregation the church is very beautiful it is popular they have millions of subscribers on their youtube platform no you have to do your research before you move to a certain city or state you're gonna do your research are there job opportunities here if you're going to work for a company you want to find out are there are there opportunities for promotion is there room for growth you have to think about these things when you're becoming a part of a church i'm called to work I'm a singer. I'm called to lead worship. Will there be any opportunity or room for growth for the, the ability for me to be involved and engage in certain things within this ministry? It's a problem. You're a part of a church. You're a very good singer, but you have never been given the opportunity to sing in all of your um, 10 or 20 years of tenure in being a part of that ministry. It is a problem. 
sometimes God will anoint you and put you in a place where he trains you and prepares you before he releases you that's okay we understand that but at what point in time are you given the opportunity to do what God has called you to do this is why I said that block and cell groups are very important in church youth meetings are important in church single or engaged groups married groups are important in church if you are not given the opportunity to speak to minister or to share something to be trained or nurtured openly on a main Sunday or in a main Sunday service then there must be a Friday night meeting where you are given that opportunity to be able to share something I mean how do you grow there's a problem when you're caught to the prophetic or you're caught to a certain gifting but your pastor will not identify you and help to nurture you or your pastor cannot does not have the grace to recognize the gifting there are a few things that can happen and i'm almost finished your pastor may not recognize you have a gifting because they do not want so many prophets in the church they're jealous they're intimidated that's one thing another thing is there are many churches that the pastors they're prophetic or they may not be prophetic and that's that's not a big deal there are many churches the pastor is not necessarily a prophet they don't prophesy they don't do all of that but they hear from god they operate through word of knowledge they teach and they have a this a good found it's a good foundational church to be a part of that's okay we're not bashing any church but the problem comes in where you have a prophetic call the pastor knows you have a prophetic call but he or she is not grace and is not able to equip and to train you then what happens do you sit and become stagnant on your gift do you leave that church and go somewhere else where they can train you and help you to be developed do you talk to your pastor to say pastor i think i'm called to the prophetic is there any way that you can help me the issue arises when your pastor can't help you but they are too big quote unquote big to get someone else to come in and train them as a prophet and as someone that is a part of an institution that trains matures and nurtures young prophetic voices we have a prophetic school we just launched elevation bible college and school of the prophet we started a whole bible school on this very basis in my years of teaching and equipping churches i've gone to many churches where the leaders have been so humble that they allowed me to come in and to teach and train the prophetic people people who are called to the prophetic and to ministry they learn as well i've had many pastors that sat in the congregation with their members and learned along with them pastors that asked me questions so prophetess if this happens then what do you think i should do to develop this gifting or if i have a member that struggles in this area of their prophetic call how do i help to develop that area pastors are humble enough to ask that so my question then and therefore is what happened to the other pastors if you aren't equipped why aren't you humble enough to get someone to come in and to train the members it doesn't make you be any less of a pastor if you can't train them it doesn't make you be less that you don't have the information we don't always have the information to pass on to our members which is why from time to time we invite someone to come in and to do a training there's nothing wrong with that and so because of this many people are transitioning in between churches because people are recognizing more and more that there is a purpose there's a call of god on their life and they want to be trained to operate and to fulfill the purpose and assignment that god has placed on their life that's the reason why people are transitioning or that's one of the reasons why people are transitioning so then you have to find a church where your leader is not afraid to get the help to come in that can mentor you if you are a pastor and you are afraid of getting someone to come in to mentor the people you stay because the truth is prophets will come in they will teach things that are not of god and they'll tell the people if your pastor can't help you you should come to my church there are people that go sheep hunting they'll go to churches and they will take members from one pastor's church or another church i understand so this is why you have to apply yourself to being a part of this course the final thing i'll share with you is if you're searching for a church that you want to be a part of are they preaching the sound doctrine are they preaching the true gospel of god you're not being a part of a church because the pastor is a good charismatic preacher no you want to be a part of a church where your pastor can teach or preach 
and you're receiving the true word of God, which means they're preaching that hell is real. If you live by sin, you do not repent and serve God, then you will go to hell. That's the truth. No cutting around the bushes, no sugar coating. Call sin a sin. Teach the true gospel of God that will lead people to a closer relationship with God. There's nothing wrong with being charismatic. There's nothing wrong with being loud. There's nothing wrong with doing all of these things. As a matter of fact, I'm a very theatrical minister. I'm, I preach. I love to preach with props. If I'm preaching, I'll get a whole doctor suit from the hats to the shrugs on the feet. I'll dress the whole part. In fact, I did a, a sermon on giving birth and I got a whole delivery room. I got a whole theater room. What you call it? An operating room. Um, a, a, a costume. I preach in a costume. I was preaching about I'm no longer a fear. I'm no longer chained to fear. No longer chained to my past. And I came wearing a whole prisoner's outfit to say that I rather to be a prisoner of righteousness and salvation. I dress the part. I'm very theatrical and that's okay. But even in the midst of doing all of this, you have to ensure that the gospel and the doctrine remain scriptural. That people can hear the true gospel. There are many people who are going to churches that are not getting anything that is substantial that will keep them in their times of difficulties that will keep them in their moments of uncertainty that will keep them in their moments when they feel as though their faith are wavering you need a true word of god from your church that you can hide in your heart that you will not sin against god you need the true word of god that can you can sit on as a foundation for your life that will affect you and impact you spiritually emotionally physically psychologically and all the alleys that you can think of so don't just go to a church because the leader can prophesy don't just choose to go to this church because the leader um is good at calling names and telling people what's happening in their lives no go to a church because they cater to you as an individual to your holistic needs and they preach and teach the true gospel of christ Sometimes we are to be blamed. We're searching for churches as, a, as an individual. Sometimes you are to be blamed because you're searching for a church, but you're searching for this particular church that looks good. But you're not considering these things that I have just I have just shared with you. So if you're looking for a church, be very mindful of the church that you're coming into being a part of. Find a church that caters to who God has called you to be. Not change you, but caters to who you are. Help to nurture and develop your call and your personality in God. Be very mindful of some of these things. All right, so. I just wanted to come on this is my very first podcast I'm still learning I don't know much about podcasts but I decided I'm gonna do this thing I'm gonna come on I'm gonna talk I'm gonna express certain things we're gonna talk about marriage being single talk about church hurt pastors who are hurting we're gonna be discussing just real life things if you have any topic or anything that you would want me to talk about in our next podcast you can feel free to go ahead and just put it in the comment section I'll scroll through the comments and I'll see what you guys want me to talk about if it is relevant i'll go ahead and we'll talk about it nothing but the hardcore truth coming from my heart we'll talk about it all right so i do hope that you guys were just blessed by this podcast and that perhaps you can relate and if you're trying to find a church that somehow this will help you in the future or in your now thank you guys so much for being a part of this podcast and be sure to leave a comment in the comment section like this video and share with a friend so that someone can definitely be blessed and informed by the information that was just shared in this one all right thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye